We're here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Tim Smith, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Elk Grove Unified School District. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's an honor being here. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you teach and, and your subjects. Um, I teach at Florin High School in the Elk Grove District. Um, I teach math, high school math, uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. This year I'm teaching uh, Algebra 1 and AP Statistics, but I've also taught Geometry, Honors Geometry, and Algebra 2. Okay, so it's quite a wide variety of, of math. Yes, sir. So what's it like um, you know, in, in teaching math? Because it seems now that there's, we're seeing more of an emphasis when you talk about you know, um, um, engineering and math and science and trying to really escalate what we're doing in those fields. What do you see happening in the schools? Well, math's always a, a challenge uh, to get students to buy in and to keep them motivated in math. Uh, one of the, I think one of the keys is to make it relevant, which goes back to your, your, your STEM um, mm -hmm. teaching. So I think that that's really going to help um, our ability to communicate with the students as far as in, uh, mathematically. Uh, also, Common Core is coming out, and Common Core is language-based. So a lot of the problems, instead of giving an answer of six, they'll have to explain their answer, how they got it. So I think that it's going to force the teachers, the curriculum, uh, and the students um, it's going to be more integrated into real life situations and I, I think it's going to be a, a, a much more interesting time. I think that uh, the applications for mathematics are, are really going to start to, to blossom. You're going to get to see those things and people are going to get excited about, um, hey, you know, I, I saw power poles today, you know, how can we integrate that, you know, those tension wires into mathematics. So um, I, I think it's necessary. It makes math relevant. It makes the connections that we need. Um, but I do think it's going to take a few more years with the STEM and the Common Core integration process before we, we really start to see the, the fruits of our labor. Do you think that uh, with the infusion of the Common Core, uh, let's say in math, that students will see more relevance to it because they are forced to explain their answer and not just give an answer? Absolutely. And, and I also I think it will force the teachers and the people who make the the, the curriculum uh, to think about where those concepts are encountered in everyday life because they have to they have to come up with the problems but and also the students are going to get to see something that is relevant to them um, so I, I do think I, I do think that once the students work out problems in Common Core and they do see the relevance um, I think that sticks with the students a lot longer than just coming up with an answer of six and moving on to the next concept. It almost gives them more ownership of that answer, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, Common Core is promising a, a, a much more in-depth thought process, and um, it's, it's very much language-based, so the students, the communications back and forth from the students are really going to have to improve. Um, as a teacher, I have to make sure that I, I, I am able to um, identify those, that, that vocabulary that they need to see and understand and to be able to use in that, you know, um, the street language, you know, if they're using street language to explain the problem, say, okay, I like that answer in street language, but come back and tell me, use some academic, vocabul academic vocabulary um, and, you know, tell me in those terms. And, and I notice a lot of teachers at, at our school particularly right now are, are putting, like, the vocabulary up on the bulletin board. And so as a student is getting ready to explain an answer, they'll say, okay, now focus over here on these words and tell me your answer, you know, or explain it. So I think it's going to be very, very beneficial. And I know that businesses have complained for years that students aren't able to communicate, you know, how to solve a problem. So I think we'll see a lot of improvement in that. So how long have you been a teacher now? Um, this will be my 13th year at Florin High School. Okay. And so you started your career there and you've been there the whole time? Yes, sir. Oh, that's nice. So in that amount of time, uh, you, how, have you, how have you seen teaching evolve and change? Well, I... Overall teaching, um, I, I think that we've seen a, a, a much larger integration of technology into the curriculum. Um, teachers are using more technology. Um, students obviously have more technology. Um, it's, I think that, that uh, most courses now require students to have some sort of internet-based part. They have to go do research or, or do lessons online. Um, that ch that's a been a big change. A common core is also going to be a, a big change from uh, where the pendulum is kind of swinging the other way. So. It's not as much skill-based anymore, particularly in mathematics. Um, also, too, I think Common Core, because of its language-based, I think that we're going to start to see that shift back to where we work with science, we work with social science, we work with English, because we're, we're all um, actively trying to teach a language now, um, even in mathematics. So I think that that integration 
that we've long sought with the other other you know courses and other um, subject areas. I think that we're going to see that now with Common Core and with STEM. Mm -hmm. um, one on the side that I've seen as far as changes at my school, my school next year, I think we're going to be a hundred percent free lunch, which is one of the first in our district. And so that presents its own problems. Uh, we see some students that don't have the technology. They don't have that, the ability to access the internet every night. Um, I see students with smartphones that aren't, aren't capable of making phone calls, but that's what the students use for, in, for internet access, an old iPhone or something. Um, so I think that that equity issue is going to have to be addressed. I think that those are some of the changes that we didn't see 12 years ago. So if we're going to have those expectations for students to, to be able to do internet-based base lessons and assessments, that we're going to have to make sure that they, they have that equipment. It's hard to get that equality, isn't it? I think so. Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's impossible, but I think that the people in the right locations um, in our government need to be aware of, of that inequity, and I think that um, providing additional computer labs um, we, Comcast offers a wonderful program for students of low income, but a lot of our students don't take advantage of it because the parents aren't aware of it. Um, so they could afford internet, they could afford, Comcast subsidizes a computer for them, um, but they don't take advantage of it. So I think we need to create that awareness among the parents, and also we need to make sure that the people who make the rules and the laws and assign the curriculum are aware of those, those inequities. Do you think the inequity is the biggest challenge you face at your school? Um, yes, I, I, I do. I, I think that with Common Core, I think that it will be one of the biggest challenges. Our, our school every year gets poorer and poorer, um, and I'm not sure I have the answer for that. Mm -hmm. But we've never been low performing, so I, I think that our school, we recognize that our kids are coming in in, in a poverty situation, and so we work that extra, that extra bit to make sure that the students um, have what they need, that they have access um, to our computers at school. So um, I, I think it is getting worse as far as the inequity in our school, but I think that our recognizing those issues is getting better. I think that, that eventually we'll, we'll make some headway on it. It just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, yes sir. Yeah. So uh, is teaching something you's all, you've always wanted to do? Well, I, I was in the military before. I was actually a meat cutter for a supermarket for a while, but I've always wanted to be a teacher. Um, when I was going to college and I was able to, to substitute, and I thought, this is, just, this is wonderful. Um, and so my wife became a teacher and she said, hey, you always, always wanted to be a teacher, why don't you go back? So I quit my job, went back to college, and uh, I've been loving it ever since. Mm -hmm. So every day is just, just wonderful. And what gravitated you to, to the math field? Um, well, my wife is a math teacher, and I actually I got her into teaching math. I've always appreciated math and society, and I thought that, that that was one of the biggest areas that we needed to communicate with students, that if you're, if you're not good in math, sooner or later you're going to be a victim. And I, and I tell my students, I'm not trying to frighten them, but they need to be, they need to be aware of, of how to calculate their taxes. They, and if they want to go into business, then they need to know, you know how to calculate overhead. Um, and so I don't want them to be taken advantage of. And so that was one of the things that led me to, to teach math is, is, is just so I could Im impart the importance um, to other people. Mm. And teaching them how uh, math is, while may s some students might consider it just either a hard or boring subject, how important it is in their daily lives. Exactly. Uh, for instance, we recently went down to Monterey Bay Aquarium and we saw jellyfish. And then we went over to the beach and here's a part of a jellyfish. So now I get to go back and show my students the picture that I, I took on my iPhone, and now we can calculate the diameter of that jellyfish based on the part of it using the math. Um, or we can look at, um, we can look at a, a quarterback throwing a pass. Is that a quadratic equation? Can we predict where it's going to land? And so bringing those, those things to the students, they get excited about it, and they, they start thinking, okay, well, if I take a medicine and it goes into my body and then it peaks out and it starts coming out of my body, is that a quadratic equation? So we get to discuss those things, you know, and they come up with the most wonderful ideas and stuff, and they, you teach them a concept, and they take it a step further. Mm. Well, you know what? It sounds like uh, you really try to get the students involved and make them realize that math is something that they can use every day. It, it is. It, it's something to be excited about. I mean, you don't have to be a math nerd to appreciate. Uh, you know, I'm a math nerd. You don't have to be a math nerd to appreciate the math in, in everyday activities. There's nothing that you can do that it doesn't involve it. It's a language 
that makes other things science and, and physics and and history and English it, it's it's it, it's out there it's important and, and you need it you need to be able to communicate it so mm -hmm. and that's what I try to teach to the kids well we appreciate your time thank you sir we've been speaking with Tim Smith who is one of two teachers over the year for the Elk Grove Unified School District thanks for joining us thank you